production of Broad and High is funded in part by the Greater Columbus Arts Council, supporting arts, advancing culture, and connecting the community to artists, events, and classes at columbusmakesart.com. PNC, committed to Central Ohio, for the achiever in you. From these contributing sponsors and viewers like you, thank you. This time on Broad and High, watch as artists of all abilities tackle the challenge of creating a work of art in under 90 minutes, see how art and music can play an important role in recovering from addiction. All of the energy that goes towards managing a drug addiction, it needs to be replaced with other stuff. And for me, it's creative endeavors. And our local music series continues with the soulful sounds of Parker Lewis. This and more right now on Broad and High. Welcome to Broad and High. I'm your host, Kate Quickle. What kind of masterpiece could you create in 90 minutes? Our first story tonight takes us out to the Westerville Community Center, where artists of all abilities recently participated in an art making challenge, where they were asked to interpret a live model scene in under 90 minutes. It was a program presented by VSA Ohio as part of its ongoing effort to raise awareness about art and disability by presenting art activities like this one in inclusive settings. Let's see how they did. Today is the 11th annual Day of Arts for All. It is the opening ceremony of the 23rd annual Accessible Expressions Ohio. Accessible Expressions Ohio is a statewide exhibition and tour of artwork by artists of all ages and all disabilities from all across the state of Ohio. Accessible Expressions Ohio is really all about raising awareness about arts and disability and accessibility and inclusion. The thing that's great about it is that this tour will now travel around to the state of Ohio to several different locations. The thing that's great about that is that not only do they get to come here to see the kickoff of all of this art, but then they can go to other types of galleries where this art's going to be exhibited and see their art around the state of Ohio. So it's a fantastic way to kind of step out as a new artist. So we have five artists participating in today's 90 Minute Art Making Challenge. In the 90 Minute Art Challenge, these artists are actually interpreting the model that's behind me in any way that they want. So we have somebody with a Roomba, we have somebody who's actually doing you know, very much a, a very detailed drawing, we have someone who's just doing a headshot right now. And the winner will receive a $250 cash prize and their artwork will join the Accessible Expressions Ohio Tour. I'm doing an action painting, it's very abstract expressionist to a portrait. And I'm using this uh, robotic vacuum cleaner as I call it art. It's my assistive robotic tool because I have difficulty with the dexterity in my hands uh, from a work related injury. Uh, I basically get on the canvas and I do uh, my physical therapy. Yoga poses, different rowing exercises for the injuries that I've had. And then the robot kind of bounces off of me and then I apply paint that then both of us get to play with. I started with her head, just trying to get that in place because I felt like that was the most important piece of it. Well, a lot of times the challenge is people move, but this model was really good and barely moved. I was really surprised by it because we've drawn from life before and people tend to fidget or move or their hair moves something moves and then you got to re-correct where that position is so thankfully she was a really good model and that barely happened.
name is Quinn and I am in fourth grade. I'm mostly just drawing basically and I'm just doing it like really fast but when I take my time it just turns out better. I like to experiment basically. I like to play with different um, formats. I like to play with different mediums so today I use watercolor. I'm excited that VSA Ohio was willing to let me come and <laughs> do this ridiculous thing that I did. Because I know it's ridiculous, but it is also pretty interesting and fun at the same time. So VSA Ohio works to make the arts and arts education more accessible and inclusive for people with disabilities and their support networks. If you have a disability and you want to make art, then we want to facilitate opportunities for that. You know, I think the VSA and having an arts uh, opportunities like this for individuals with disabilities is incredibly important because we want to access the community, we want to be a part of the community, and I think arts is a great way to become a part of the arts community. This 90 minute art challenge is the first time we've ever done this, so these are, these are, this is a whole new way to like express yourself. So we've never actually done live art like this, so I think this is sort of a trend. I think we'll see this in coming years because so far it's been a really big hit with the crowd. VSA Ohio works to promote the enrichment of art for people of all abilities and break down the barriers to participation. Visit VSAO.org to learn more about their events and programs. As the opioid and substance abuse crisis continues to dominate the news, more and more Ohio families find their lives impacted by addiction. A new exhibit here at the Cultural Arts Center features works made by those closest to the epidemic. We met with a few of the artists whose creative expression plays a crucial part in their ongoing health and the organizers of Operation Monarch who discussed the importance of addressing substance abuse and the role that art can play in the journey to recovery. So we're at the Cultural Arts Center in downtown Columbus and we are opening Operation Monarch which is an exhibition that features work by individuals who have been affected by the substance abuse crisis. We really weren't sure how big it was going to be but it turned out to be 65 artists, 93 pieces of a huge variety of things. Art plays an important role in recovery because um, no matter what your creative process is, it takes a lot of hard work, a lot of dedication, a lot of time, and perseverance. Unfortunately, our family has been um, visited by the opioid epidemic. I went through a whole lot of grief, shame, everything else that everyone else uh, goes through and had my own recovery along with my loved one's recovery. And through my art, I was finding a release and then also a way to describe the emotions I was going through. I think part of the show is to show the reality of this whole thing, that uh, it's here. This whole show has been eye-opening on a lot of different levels and so fascinating of how people describe how this has touched their lives in some way. My life was very robotic when I was drinking. Like I was programmed just for like one thing, really, at the end. And that was drinking, destruction, and that was day in and day out. And so I think about like a robot that doesn't really have a choice in it, or that it just has a program and a robot does whatever it's programmed to do. When I was drinking, my life was so unbalanced. Uh, physically, mentally, spiritually, you know, all of the above. And there's some balance in my life today. Since I've been sober, I've, I can't count the number, but it's close to 60 pieces of art that I've created sober, where 
the number was nothing like that beforehand. My situation was hopeless. Like I was probably a candidate for treatment before I graduated high school. You know, I totally was, you know, full-blown alcoholic and drug addict, you know, by the age of 17. Like there got to be a certain point where the entirety of my life was about drugs and alcohol and a certain lifestyle around it. You know, my life's drastically different now. Like I should be a statistic. Uh, I think I'd lose my mind if I didn't paint for a majority of the day, every day. You know, some of it, like I'm self-taught, so, you know, it's not like this perfect Rembrandt-style portrait, so there's probably, you know, a rough around the edges appearance to it. I think it's safe to say I'm rough around the edges. <laughs> That's probably the nicest way to put it. You know, within you know, the painting that I painted, you know, I hope it, it you know, folks will dig in and, and uh, learn a little American history. But it's a, it's a painting of Ronald Reagan smoking crack. You know, it's, you know, upside down American flag and there's like crack smoke stained skulls instead of stars. In one corner is Freeway Ricky Ross and in the other corner is Gary Webb. All of the energy that goes towards managing a drug addiction and like the passion for it. It needs to be replaced with other stuff. And for me, it's, you know, creative endeavors. I think people are really going to appreciate not only the, the art, but the bravery of the people that came forward to tell a little bit about themselves, because this is one of those things that people are afraid to talk about. And that's why we really wanted to have a show about it to bring it to the forefront more and put a focus on it. I hope that people, when they view this exhibition, feel like they're not alone in the addiction crisis and that they can go through and feel hopeful and that recovery is possible and that they walk away feeling inspired and supported. Operation Monarch is on view at the Cultural Arts Center through May 11th. Visit their website for details. Now here's another way communities are responding to Ohio's ongoing opioid problem. Behavioral health centers across the state are embracing music therapy as a tool in addiction treatment and recovery. For this next story, our friends at Think TV in Dayton visited two different treatment facilities in Southwest Ohio, Nova Behavioral Health in Dayton and the Ridge Addiction Recovery Center in Milford near Cincinnati to see how they address coping and healing strategies through musical experiences. Eight to ten years ago, the mix of alcoholism versus some form of drug addiction was almost half and half. The alcoholism factor has dwindled to almost 5%, and nearly everyone else is involved in heroin. There seems to be a highway that runs through Cincinnati and Dayton where a lot of this stuff shows up, and it's very cheap and easy to get get hold of. The movement from um, recreational drug use to addiction seems to be more people coming off of opiates for, for some kind of pain management that has led to their addiction. Music therapy provides in, in that context a different way of approaching um, uh, individuals' awareness of, of their issues and of, of their current coping skills and how those might change, how they might use uh, creative arts or more creative outlets as a means of getting in touch with themselves, their emotions, so that they can move forward. Music therapy training includes a lot of training in psychology as well as how music affects human beings or how music helps human beings get in touch with their emotional lives. Sometimes I sit in the music therapy sessions and participate in them, um, and I get to 
listen to the dialogue that's going on. And what is said really does translate into their individual counseling. Sometimes it translates into group in terms of themes that we cover. When they first get there, they're kind of in survival mode. Um, but the idea of being held by a community is communicated very effectively, and they feel that. Music therapy provides an avenue for them to use their creativity and use their um, inner resources um, towards emotional expression and learning how they handle them, which part of addiction is hiding or burying uh, emotions that are difficult or challenging. Counseling, it's all in the head. Music gives us a chance to uh, express our feelings differently and uh, connect with other people around our feelings differently. In music therapy, we think of four primary methods. So one is to use song material and to sing. Another way is to use um, improvisation. We also use composition, and so in groups we might compose songs together, or we might take a song that everyone knows and tear it apart and recompose the lyrics to that so that it says what they want it to say. I was uh, actively addicted from the age of 14 till about 39. I'm probably in the first generation of people to not have like a generic alcoholism. Uh, it was polysubstance, mostly opiates and alcohol. People are more adept at processing their feelings than milieus in the past have been. And I attribute that to the music therapy because it gives them another channel to work with their feelings. They work better together because for that hour, what they're doing is they're kind of linking up and they're becoming a community at a different level. And so once that part is over, it resonates out through the rest of the week and their daily life together. We are so readily exposed to song material. Everywhere we go as Americans, we are bombarded with music, depending on where they use. There's typically some kind of music happening that can very easily be triggering for craving feelings. So as we listen then, um, we talk about the energies that that song brings. It's not just about the lyrics, it's about the energy of the, the music that supports the lyrics that might be triggering or that they might find really soothing. So we talk about those process, how to focus on engaging with music that's healthier for me than the music that triggers my craving feelings. Anytime you're involved in, in a creative process or with a creative medium, you're getting in touch with the aesthetic. And I think all human beings need that. When I am in a an addictive process, my focus is so on self and getting my fix, getting that addiction need filled. I lose track of everything around me and those around me. And those relationships are all have aesthetic properties. My relationship to the world, my relationship to you, to my family. Um, to lose touch with the aesthetic, to, to the beautiful aspects of life, is serious stuff. So to reclaim that through a creative medium like music or art therapy really, I think, enhances any kind of treatment process. Finally tonight, our local music series continues with a studio performance by Parker Lewis. The Akron native describes his band's sound as an amalgamation of groove and color. Indeed, their R&B sounds are fused with silky energy and lots of soul. Here they are performing Only Fire, which is off their first EP, All Good Things, Part 1.
Don't hold back It's only fine Yeah It's only fine Just forget it. You're such a liar. You're such a liar. I don't want no. No, I don't want to love you near the hole. It's keeping me. Just a victim of my desire. You're my desire. Truth on Don't hold back. Zone it by. I don't want to know. Well, that's our show. You can find all of our stories online at WOSU.org. And of course, check out our free WOSU mobile app. Give us a follow on social. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We're leaving you today with more music by Parker Lewis. For all of us here at WOSU, I'm Kate Quickle. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here next week. I'm losing touch Maybe I'm not in love And I can't find the truth And I don't want the truth no. Nothing to see inside Never the right
RJD2, DJ, and musician. I make music with records, turntables, a sampler, synthesizers, keyboards, anything else I can get my hands on. I never know what a song is going to sound like until it's done. The thrill and excitement of that process of not knowing where a song is going to take you is what keeps me making music after all these years. Columbus location is a great middle ground between the East and West Coasts. Good food, great people, and an entrepreneurial spirit that is inspiring to see in action. I'm RJD2, music is my art, and there's no place I'd rather make it. Production of Broad and High is funded in part by the Greater Columbus Arts Council, supporting arts, advancing culture, and connecting the community to artists, events, and classes at columbusmakesart.com. PNC, committed to Central Ohio, for the achiever in you. From these contributing sponsors, and viewers like you, thank you.